Hello students, a very good morning to you. Today we will complete uh, our revision of chapter 1 that is life process of class 10. We skip this topic, so sorry students. Let's continue the revision of chapter 1 of that is last topic called excretion. Excretion you know that is the process of removal of waste from the body. As we know that which type of waste here excretion and excretion has a great difference. In excretion, we remove the undigested fecal material and that is a part of your nutrition. But here excretion itself is a process. And in excretion, we eliminate out the, un, uh, the unfiltered substance. And excretion occurs in human beings and in all vertebrates through a pair of kidney. Before we start about the study of kidney, let's start some organisms who uses different mode for removing or releasing their excretory product. So students, starting from unicellular organisms to multicellular organisms, all the organisms have different structures in their body to remove their unfiltered substance or unwanted substance, means the toxic substance. So in unicellular organisms like amoeba and paramecium, they have contractile vacuole for removing the undigested food. But they have a cell membrane or cell surface through which means by diffusion they eliminate the toxic from the body. If we move to multicellular organism means starting from planaria, planaria have the flame cell or which we can say as in aquatic organisms green glands are present means aquatic uh, arthropods like your prawn, in prawn green glands are present that is used as excretory organ. Same, if we consider about earthworm, earthworm, you know about the earthworm, whose biological, whose biological name is Pheredima, that is earthworm has nephridia as the excretory organ. Next, if we move to birds, then birds are called as uricotelic animals, uricotelic. Why they are called as uricotelic? As they release or remove they are toxic, means urea in the form of uric acid. Means when a uh, bird releases its excreta, then that excreta contains uric acid. That's why it burns. Continuous uh, release of the excreta birds may cause corrosion to the surface. The surface where they put their excreta or release their excreta. So they are called as uricotelic. Remember students, those who release their excretory product, in the form of uric acid are called as uricotelic and birds are called as uricotelic animals and their excretory organ is kidney as birds are vertebrates. Here you have to understand all vertebrates have a characteristic feature that they have a pair of kidney for excretion. So birds also have kidney and through kidney they filter the urea in the form of uric acid. Next, in case of human beings, we release urine. During urination, we release urea. So, we are ureotelic animals. Why we are ureotelic? Because we release directly urea through urine. Again, ammonia is released as excretory product in aquatic animals. So, they are called as ammonotelic. So, students, here uricotelic, then this one is ureotelic and this is ammonotelic. They are of different categories depending on the excretory products they release. Means they all release urea but some of them release in the form of uric acid and some of release them in the form of ammonia. As ammonia is water soluble substance, so aquatic organisms including fish and other aquatic organisms release ammonia as excretory product. So these are not our topic. Our main topic is excretion in human beings. As I have told you, human beings are vertebrates. Means we have a vertebral column and presence of a pair of kidneys to the lower abdominal region. This region is called as abdomen and this region is called as lower abdomen. Towards the vertebral column, means towards the backbone, we have a pair of kidney whose shape is like beans. Or you can say as Rajma. Rajma set structure the kidney has. You can see the diagram. And if I stand like this, then, then this represents the right side and this represents the left side. So this portion is called as right side and this portion is called as left side. So let's see. This is 
राइट किडनी दिस इज लेफ्ट किडनी आज आई टोल्ड यू ए पेयर ऑफ किडनी इज सिचुएटेड टूवर्ड्स द लोअर एबडोमिनल रीजन एगेन दिस इज कॉल्ड एज रेनाल वेन यू नो व्हाट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ रेनाल वेन लाइक ऑल आर्टरीज कैरी प्योर ब्लड एक्सेप्ट रेनाल आर्टरी एग्जैक्टली हियर ऑल वेन्स कैरी इम्प्योर ब्लड एक्सेप्ट रेनाल वेन सो हियर रेनाल वेन कैरीज द अनफिल्टर्ड हियर वी विल से अनफिल्टर्ड वी कैंट से प्योर बिकॉज वी आर स्टडिंग अबाउट फिल्ट्रेशन सो हियर वेदर इट इज फिल्टर्ड मीन्स प्यूरिफाइड और फिल्टर्ड और नॉट दैट्स वाई रेनाल वेन कैरीज अनफिल्टर्ड ब्लड वेर एज रेनाल आर्टेरी कैरीज फिल्टर्ड ब्लड सो हाउ दिस प्रोसेस ऑफर्स इन साइड आर बॉडी as we know that the kidney is the excretory organ so first blood is connected collected by the renal vein and it enters into the artery and through renal artery it goes inside the kidney and in kidney there are millions of microscopic structure called as nephron they are called as nephron nephron is the smallest unit of excretion smallest unit of excretion actually the excretion process is done by means filtration occur by nephrons that are present in the kidney or constitutes the kidney both the kidneys contains millions of nephron and nephrons are the smallest unit of excretion in which when the blood enters into both the kidneys means to right or left kidney then it goes to the nephron and in nephron its filtration occurs so students let's see how nephron filters blood you can see here the structure of nephron the nephron is look like this this is the structure of a nephron you can see this look like this is the structure of nephron this is the structure of a nephron so let's see this one is called as afferent artery this one is called as afferent artery this is afferent artery this one is called as efferent artery this one is called as your this is called as glomerulus this is glomerulus and this part is called as this part is called as bowman's capsule clear students this part is called as which comes down this part is called as descending loop descending loop and this part which goes like this this part is called as ascending loop and this part is called as your collecting duct so students let's understand when blood unfiltered blood that is bring by the renal vein enters into the kidney and in kidney as i have told you millions of nephrons are present which are the filtration unit of kidney or the smallest unit of filtration then when the blood goes through the kidney towards the nephron then afferent artery means which carries blood towards the glomerular region or which brings blood towards the kidney that is called afferent artery afferent artery brings blood unfiltered blood and that blood goes into the glomerulus and the structure of glomerulus is like your uh, strainer means chai ki uh, chai ki channi so this smallest holes filter the blood and during filtration during filtration occurs two times one is initial filtration and final filtration during initial filtration glucose and amino acids are filtered and absorbed glucose and amino acid glucose and amino acid are filtered and absorbed after filtration rest of the water and other substances protein move through the efferent artery 
and it during its movement the descending loop and ascending loop have different functions descending loop is permeable to water means it absorbs water from the unfiltered substance and ascending loop absorbs salt as we know that your urine is, urine tests salty why this is salty as we when we are releasing urine then it not only releases urea but also excess salt and water is also removed through urine that's why all the water or all the salt is not removed so some amount of salt and some amount of water is also absorbed by these tubules that these tubules are coiled and when they expand they increase the surface area and absorption of water and salt occurs rapidly so here the descending loop which i labeled absorbs salt means that's why we can say that it is permeable to water and the ascending loop is permeable to salt during the movement of unfiltered through the tubules water and salt get absorbed by the descending and ascending loops then the rest of the unfiltered collected in the collecting duct after collecting in the collecting duct they are gradually through the ureter you can see here the diagram this is ureter this part is called this part is called your ureter clear student this is ureter which brings urine towards the urinary bladder this is urinary this is urinary bladder rest of the essential substances are absorbed by the tubules of the nephron and the unfiltered substance through ureter comes towards the urinary bladder and in the urinary bladder it is stored until the pressure is not created and as it is a muscular structure so it is direct control of central nervous system we can control the urge of urination that's why we for many times we can stop the urge of urination so students here i have told you glomerulus acts as the main filtration area as it has many small microscopic holes are present through which glucose and ammonia are filtered but in glomerulus there is filtration of protein can't occur that's why it is called as ultra filtration glomerular filtration glomerular filtration is called as is called as ultra filtration why as it do not filter protein so it is called as ultra filtration so we can say glomerular filtration or ultra filtration again after initial filtration 180 liter urine is formed in our body don't get astonished 180 liter urine is formed but we release only 1 to 2 liter of urine then where 170 liter of urine goes during its movement through these tubules the rest of 178 liter get reabsorbed and only 1 to 2 liter of urine we release every day clear students so kidney is very important uh, important as well as it is so easy to understand just you have to remember renal vein brings unfiltered blood towards the kidney in kidney millions of nephrons are present these are called as filtration unit inside nephron filtration occurs after filtration the filtrate get reabsorbed and the unfiltrate through the ureter comes towards the urinary bladder and in urinary bladder it is stored for a long time and when a pressure is caused then it is released through urethra here is the inferior vena cava inferior vena cava means which brings unfiltered blood from the lower part of the body and here is the superior vena cava which brings the unfiltered blood from the upper part of the body here i have right renal remember students in biology kidney is called as renal clear so it is called as renal artery and renal vein means those artery which connects to the kidney are called as renal artery and those veins are which connect to the vein are called as renal vein so students this is all about your excretory system like animals plants also excretes clear students so how plants excrete plants also take their nutrition plants also have transportation so plants also respire and plants also excrete means plants remove their excretory product so how plants remove their excretory products 
Plants have different structures for removing their excretory product. Means you can see many plants shedded their leaf when their leaves get yellow. Means in the leaf the excretory product is stored due to which they fall off. Again some plants remove their bark. Bark is the outer layer which is a hard structure. This is also the excretory product. You know about glue or gum which is called as gond. That glue is also an excretory product in plant. Sometimes those plants who have a long lifespan release black colored substance to the soil. They are also called as the excretory product. But the most important excretory product is CO2 and O2. Oxygen is excretory product in plant when during photosynthesis. Remember students this is most important. Oxygen is the excretory product during photosynthesis whereas carbon dioxide is the excretory product during respiration. Why? Because during respiration carbon dioxide is released by the plants and during photosynthesis oxygen is released by the plants. That's why we consider oxygen and carbon dioxide as important excretory products of plants. So students this is all about your excretion. In the next class we will continue revision of chapter 2.